but does does every single one of my openings have to be funny? Some shit ain't funny, dude. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and just a couple of days from the time of this recording anyway, President Trump is going to be meeting with Xi Jinping, who's the president of China. And almost certainly on their discussion list, uh, the list of things to discuss, uh, are going to be a lot of things that are going to be interesting to the prepping community. Uh, not the least of which is just economic issues. Russia and China have been kind of moving to try to uh, supplant or um, you know, make an alternate world reserve currency to move past the petrodollar. Um, if and when that happens, wait, wait, did I say if? I meant when. When that happens, that is going to be a major hit to the U.S. economy because uh, the petrodollar uh, and the dollar as the world's reserve currency is kind of the one last big thing holding our economy up at the moment. Uh, so that's a, that, that's a big important thing. We should uh, pay attention to that. But what I want to talk about today is North Korea because I'm sure that's going to be on the agenda as well. And it's been floating there for decades now, uh, nuclear-armed North Korea. A lot of people are thinking that it's going to come to a head now, and I don't think that that's unrealistic. We have a President Trump now, and for better or worse, President Trump's a man of action. He says he's going to do something, and he at least tries to do it. <laughs> We've seen the past couple months him try to do a bunch of things, and uh, you know they haven't necessarily gone as he planned that they were going to go. Trump is definitely a man of action. He says he's going to do something, and, and he does it. On North Korea, what he's saying right now is that the status quo can't stand. It can't persist having... And Kim Jong-un, leader of North Korea, I, he does seem like he's kind of a nut. <laughs> and, and how can you not be I, it, you, when you're raised like that? I, I mean, he's kind of like a child star, except much worse. Uh, he was like a child god, or a son, or a descendant of a god, or whatever. So, Trump has said that the situation can't stand. Trump's Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, is saying all options are on the table, um, that, which is just code for saying we're ready to, to attack if, if we don't get the things that we feel we need. It's also code for possibly sending in you know, bird flu infested clown zombies. I would give that a try first. You know, maybe Kim Jong-un can put them into his, his parades, you know, if they don't end up toppling the regime. But, uh, all options are on the table. They're talking about uh, armed conflict with a nuclear armed adversary who does have the capacity of reaching out and attacking the continental United States. A lot of people are talking about uh, the fear that North Korea is developing these ICBMs. It could carry warheads to the United States, but the, North Korea has already flown satellites over the U.S. They can get stuff up there um, and they don't even have to launch and and particularly well target anything. They could just launch and explode up in the upper atmosphere and create an EMP that would really cripple the United States. And that is a, a huge threat and could, have, could happen today. They have the capability of doing that today. Uh, if you're not familiar with EMP, uh, which is a, 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 an electromagnetic pulse, uh, there's a great book called One Second After, which I would highly recommend checking out. And you can actually download, or at least re uh, recently you could download a, an uh, audio file of the book right off of YouTube. Just search for One Second After. The author is Bill Forsgen or something like that. I'll write his name down at the bottom here. Um, but that's a great book that uh, talks about a lot of things that would be concerns uh, if there was an EMP strike. And an EMP strike, there's no mushroom cloud down on the ground. There's no radiation, but it's tremendously dangerous, tremendously damaging, and millions of people would die. Uh, it cripples the electrical grid, and so much of our society is so dependent on it. Millions, millions of people would die. It's a huge threat, and the only reason it hasn't happened yet is by the good graces and the Kim Jong-un regime. <laughs> so there's been a fair degree of luck that's uh, prevented it from happening so far. But a lot of people, like I said, are feeling like things are going to come to a head, and I'm sure Trump and Xi Jinping are going to be talking about that. If China were, if China were feeling that they were in a position to do something about North Korea, you would think that they would have by now, because uh, I, 
China is kind of North Korea's only ally, and even at that, they're they're more like a frenemy than anything else. Because you can't imagine that China likes the idea of having this insane nuclear armed regime just on their doorstep. So I would tend to think that the Chinese would not that if they felt like they could do something about it, that they they would have done it already. Um, and in terms of the North Koreans, they've seen what's happened to other countries that have discontinued their nuclear arms programs. Uh, they get invaded and, and toppled. Uh, look what happened to Muammar Gaddafi. So uh, there's been a, a good lesson for North Korea to make sure that they don't discontinue their nuclear arms program because they've seen what happens if you do that. Uh, so you've got North Korea, which is rationally saying we have to continue this nuclear arms program, otherwise we're going to end up like all the rest of them. You've got China that you would think that if they were able to do something about it or felt they could do something about it, they would have already. And you have Trump that's saying that the, the, the current status quo can't stand and it's going to have to change and that all options are on the table. So it, unless somebody blinks and the, people, the players here are a lunatic running North Korea and Trump, none of them seem like they have a tendency of blinking. Uh, but unless somebody does blink, we're headed towards war, an ar armed conflict with an enemy that can reach out and attack the U United States. Now, they probably only get one shot off, <laughs> but one shot is really all that they need, uh, as long as it actually functioned and it wasn't a failed test. So a lot of their tests fail, but a lot of them don't fail. So what do, you, what do you think about that? Is this something that's on your radar? Are you making preparations for it? I think a lot of prepping is people just talk about gear, gear, gear. You know, even I've got solar panels. All those solar panels would be totally useless. I'm not, I'm not keeping stacks of solar panels in Faraday cages or anything like that. What is your plan for this? Because it seems like a real possibility. If you're listening to people and you believe what they say and you look at their track record and feel that their track record suggests that you should be listening to what they say and believe their threats, we're headed for war with North, North Korea. Like I said, unless Trump links, and Trump doesn't seem to have a tendency of blinking, or um, the North Korean regime blinks. What other option is there at the moment? Are you preparing for this? Because they are a dangerous adversary, even though they're small and nuts and, and all that. That doesn't mean that there's not danger there. What are you doing uh, to, to, get, to, to prepare yourself for that potentiality uh, that, that might happen? Uh, that there could be an EMP strike or otherwise um, I think a lot of people that are into primitive living skills would have an edge up on people who are more into gear stacking. That's my sense of it. I have a, a fair degree of primitive living um, skill sets, uh, you know, where I can just go out and do what I need to do. I don't really need the electrical components and all that kind of thing. Uh, where do you fall in that spectrum? How do you get water? How do you secure your food? How do you keep yourself warm? All those things. Something to think about because if you're paying attention, that's that's kind of where it seems like things are going at the moment. So give it some thought if you haven't already. Uh, bone up on those parts of your your prepping arsenal, and hopefully they're able to resolve it in in uh, in some way that isn't uh, isn't war because war is always bad for for pretty much everyone except for you know there's certain rich people I think that do pretty well off of wars, but uh, President Trump even said it himself. If the Chinese are willing and able to, to help us, it will be good for China. I think that's probably true. Uh, and if they're not, it's bad for everybody. And I think that's true, too. I disagree with an awful lot of what Trump says, but he, he, he occasionally says some pretty true things, I think. That's one of them. War is always bad for everybody. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.